good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Cameron Kahn. Um, I'm an infectious disease physician practicing at uh, St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto. Uh, I'm a, an associate professor with the Faculty of Medicine in the School of Public Health at the University of Toronto, and I'm also the founder and CEO of a digital health company called Blue Dot. And today, I'm going to be speaking about infectious diseases in a rapidly changing world. Okay, so our world is going through some pretty rapid changes from everything from population growth, there's about a billion people added to the planet every 12 years, urbanization, climate change, and we're in the midst of the confluence of all of these different global forces. And unfortunately, what they are doing, these forces together, are driving the emergence of many types of diseases that humans have never encountered before, in some cases with severe consequences. What's also happening is infectious diseases that were already here, we are starting to see their global geographic range expand. If we just think about Canadians and Lyme disease, we're now unfortunately having to become acquainted with this disease as it starts to uh, come on the rise in this particular country. And we are an incredibly mobile uh, population, not only in Canada, but across the globe. Last year, four billion people boarded commercial flights and traveled across the world. Uh, and my team actually analyzed all those itineraries. I will point out anonymously, we traveled seven trillion kilometers across the planet last year. That's for perspective, that's about half a light year or 20,000 trips to and from the sun. So we are moving these microbes around the planet in completely unprecedented ways. And of course, these events are having, they're speaking of disruption, they are incredibly disruptive, not only to our health, they are sometimes affecting our security, uh, they are profoundly impacting our economies, and they can have disruptive effects even on the fabric of society as we see here in this image. Now, this isn't just a uh, theoretical construct for me. This is a very personal story. Fifteen years ago, I was beginning my career as an academic physician at the University of Toronto, and I was returning back to Toronto, which is where I'm from, uh, to start my career, and shortly after I got to the city, so did this virus that nobody had ever seen or heard of before. And of course, now we know it as SARS. And I saw this close, up close, and really saw what this did to our city. One of my colleagues got infected with SARS. Thankfully, she survived. Uh, my colleagues across the healthcare workforce were terrified that they might get infected and potentially bring this virus back into their homes. Um, the city had 25,000 people in quarantine, the World Health Organization, advised the, the world to stop traveling to the city of Toronto, and this had billions in economic consequences to the city. And that outbreak lasted four months. We had 25,000 people in quarantine, and it really revealed how a tiny little virus could cripple a city with millions of people. And it also, just for perspective, Toronto was just one of many cities going through the same type of experience, Hong Kong, Beijing, Singapore, Taipei, uh, there were many other cities across the globe um, experiencing the same kind of outbreaks. And what this really reveals to us, you know, SARS has often been referred to as a dress rehearsal for a pandemic. And, you know, we have learned quite a bit in the past 15 years, but we are still deeply vulnerable to the threat of emerging infectious diseases. And I mention this at the centennial of the Spanish flu. So 100 years ago at this time, this very time of year, the Spanish flu was emerging and this led to the deaths of 5% of the world's population in, in 1918. That's more than all the civilian and military deaths in World War I, to put that in perspective. And so we are still quite vulnerable to these types of threats. Now, on one hand, I have painted a pretty bleak picture about what the future may look like, but I also want to say there are reasons for optimism. We're in the midst of another series of global trends that we just heard about, the rise of big data, the advent of artificial intelligence, the global adoption of digital technologies like smartphones. Probably everyone in this audience has at least one of their phones in their pocket. And what we really need to be able to do is to use these tools to build something that doesn't exist, a global early warning system for infectious diseases. You might think this exists at the World Health Organization or the CDC, for example. We don't have such a system yet today, but we desperately need one. Now, data are just data. They're not insights. Ultimately, in order to transform all of these ingredients into something that is meaningful, this is a complex problem. You need a diverse set of skills. And so five years ago, I ended up founding Blue Dot, 
we are an eclectic mix of physicians, veterinarians, ecologists, epidemiologists, data scientists, engineers, software developers, and collectively we are bringing our skills together to build the world's first global early warning system for infectious diseases. We are working with governments, with businesses, with frontline healthcare workers, but we also deeply believe that these insights should be connected to individuals. Now there's this lovely passage from the Talmud that whoever saves a single life, it's considered as if they have saved the entire world. And on the other hand, we could look at this and say that it really only takes one of us to start an outbreak or start a pandemic. Um, and so ultimately, if we can actually empower uh, individuals and each one of us can take responsibility to protect our own health, we can actually protect the world around us. And this is one of our core objectives at Blue Dot. So I'm gonna just leave you with a parting thought about the next time you're on a trip and going somewhere, thinking a little bit about what is it that you might be introducing to another part of the world? What might you be bringing home? When we think about the Zika virus outbreak in 2016, that virus didn't spread across Latin America by mosquitoes flying from one country to the next. People took it to different places and infected mosquitoes in their destinations. So ultimately, for each one of us, as we travel around the world, we are so interconnected and so interdependent, when we are healthy, we are ultimately creating a healthier and a safer and a more secure world. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Blue Dot, I've left our website here. And just thank you for having me here this evening.